Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel. Today we followed the order of responsive prayer 2 on page 285 in the Lutheran Service Book. The text is Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 15. The Reverend Brian Heller is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The order of service for today is responsive prayer 2, page 285. Please rise. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your grace. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Hebrews chapter 9. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come. Then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls, and with the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies for a purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offer himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Since a death has occurred that redeems them, from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Be Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning we are almost there. The end is in sight. We have fasted from singing what my son affectionately calls the A-word throughout this season. The divine service has been stripped of the glory and excelsis. And no doubt if you have taken up a fast of food or another act of giving something up for the season of Lent, you have really begun to experience that struggle as the weeks have gone on. But next week... Holy Week is quickly approaching. Yes, Holy Week, a week filled with betrayal, denial, sacrifice, and death. A week filled with consciences that need to be purified, consciences that need to be cleaned. And so it may be easy for us to sit here this morning and reminisce on a story that we all know so well. An account in which we can wag our fingers at the usual suspects. Judas, Pilate, Caiaphas, Peter, and our own self-righteous condemnation for their misdeeds, for their own soil consciences throughout the Passion account. But again, as this is a penitential season, what happens when we take a look upon our own lives? What happens when we look at our own consciences? Because by our own very sinful nature, each one of us inherits a bad conscience. But the truth is, it doesn't stop there, does it? Because in our sin, we love to feed that bad conscience. We love to hear and contribute to conversations that speak ill of others. Maybe we like to pull a Peter, neglect to protect our neighbor and his reputation, denying them if the situation seems to warrant it, and we ourselves can come out ahead. We love to angrily murder one another in our hearts, 
We love to comfortably sit back as armchair theological quarterbacks, judging others, unwilling to put the best construction on everything. And of course, hasn't social media platforms like Twitter and TikTok made it more possible and inviting for us to explain everything in the kindest way? But like St. Peter, who will try to justify his actions of following Jesus at a distance after his arrest, as he stops in the courtyard by relating that he still wanted to see what would happen to Jesus, but not at the expense of his own life. And this half-love, half-fear mentality, do we also, too, love to justify our own actions? No matter how far we can stretch our own justifications. Because, as the saying goes, the end justifies the means. Yet this is the lie we tell ourselves as we try to clean our own consciences. Because our bad consciences does not like to view God according to who he truly is, but will rather look at him as an affirming grandpa, giving us a wink as he looks the other way as we go on with our bad behavior and sinful lives. Yet the law is written on our hearts. We know that those sins that we struggle with the most, gossiping, lusting, coveting, idolatry, are indeed wrong, and we stand convicted. Indeed, all of our consciences have been absolutely corrupted with sin. As Dr. Martin Luther writes, no matter how much we may try, a troubled conscience cannot escape being distressed and troubled. No amount of good works or reasons of self-justification will save you. Fasting from saying the A word and other spiritual disciplines, though certainly well and good within their proper context, will not grant you salvation, nor will clean your conscience. You cannot reason yourself out of the reality that you are in. And the reality is simple. Only a good and pure conscience can come before God in absolute confidence. So what we need is an intercessor, a mediator, a high priest, who will win for us the good things that are to come. We need to have blood that is more precious than that of goats and calves to be sacrificed and shed for us. And so Christ comes. He comes as the high priest, and he does what no other high priest can do. He offers himself up as the perfect, unblemished, all-atoning sacrifice, not just for the sins of the Israelites, but for the sins of the entire world. He offers himself up for you and for me. Christ comes. He enters into the holy place of the cross, shedding his own holy and precious blood and securing your redemption. And that redemption isn't secured just for a specific amount of time, but for all of eternity. There is no sin that you have committed that is outside of his sacrifice. And so Christ delivers these good things, forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, these things that cleanses our consciences through his very means of word and sacraments. In these things, we are given the good consciences that we can approach the heavenly feast with all confidence and purified hearts. All of us, as we sing moments ago, are invited into the most holy of places, the holy of holies, by the saving blood of Jesus. No longer is there a curtain or veil separating you from God, 
But now we have an aisle beckoning us, inviting us to come into the Holy of Holies with purified hearts and consciences to receive our Savior's true body and blood each and every week. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning, be at peace. Because Christ has laid down his life for you as the perfect sacrifice and has redeemed you with his holy, precious blood. Take comfort in the truth and the reality that indeed your consciences have been purified by Christ himself. And as we look towards Holy Week, refresh yourself. At just as St. Peter's conscience was cleaned by our Lord, so too your consciences are clean, cleansed every single day as you live in your baptismal life given to you by God himself. Children of God, and you have been given forgiveness, one for you, on the altar of the cross. You are heirs of eternal life, now and evermore. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please rise. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, Hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. be gracious to us, Hear us Lord. be gracious to us, Tell us Lord. from all sin, from all error, from all evil. From the crafts and assaults of the devil, Good Lord, deliver us. from sudden and evil death, Good Lord, deliver us. from pestilence and famine, Good Lord, deliver us. from war and bloodshed, Good Lord, deliver us. from sedition and from rebellion, Good Lord, us. from lightning and tempest, Good Lord, deliver us. from all calamity by fire and water, Good Lord, us. and from everlasting death. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, Help us, Lord. by your holy nativity, Help us, Lord. by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, Help us, Lord. by your agony and bloody sweats, Help us, Lord. by your cross and passion, Help us, Lord. by your precious death and burial, Help us, Lord. by your glorious resurrection and ascension, Help us, Lord. and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church, and the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word and to sustain them in holy living. We have been glory to us, Lord. To put an end to all schisms and causes of offense. We have been glory to us, Lord. To bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. We have been glory to us, Lord. To beat down Satan under our feet. We have been glory to us, Lord. To send faithful laborers into your harvest. We have been glory to us, Lord. And to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand. And to comfort the, and help the weak hearted and the distressed. To give to all peoples concord and peace. To preserve our land from discord and strife. To give our country your protection in every time of need. To direct and defend our president and all in authority. We have glory to hear us, Lord. To bless and protect our magistrates and all our people. We have glory to hear us, Lord. To watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We have glory to hear us, Lord. To protect and guide all who travel. We have glory to hear us, Lord. 
to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings. To defend all orphans and widows and provide for them. To strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children. To free those in bondage. And to have mercy on us all. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. To give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth. And graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, merciful Father, you have promised to hear the prayers of all who in repentance call out to you. Graciously hear us, so that all evils which beset us may be of no avail, that we, your servants, may evermore give thanks to you and your holy church, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.